Jan. We're with Greg, Judy, and Jan, Judy. Yes. <laughs> I think that's the biggest mistake people make in the sheep business. Mm -hmm. Especially novices getting in. Oh, I don't want two groups. We'll just run them together. Well, you can run them together. Yeah. But when they start lambing and it's cold and it's windy and there's snow on the ground, you're going to lose about 50% of your lamb crop. Mm. Because when a baby lamb is yeah. born, okay. they're, they're just a little bitty guy. Mm. And if they drop on the ground and that wind's blowing, it's not the cold that gets them as bad as it is wet. Wet and cold is dead. They just, they just don't get up and suck. Mm. But there's nothing tougher than a baby lamb if they can get up and get their mouth on the teats. Once they get the mouth on the teeth, I've seen it. I've watched a lot of it happen. They'll come out, they'll shake off the water from the after birth, and they're up and they're on that teat. I would say within three to five minutes. Mm. A calf, they'll, yeah, no. they'll lay around for 30 minutes sometimes. A big calf may lay around for an hour before he gets up and sucks. Yeah. But these lambs, they're up and sucking. It's just amazing how uh, aggressive they are when they when they come out. So. Do you think that's because they come out with a twin? Well, I think part of it is in nature, if they came out and didn't get up, they got eight. Yeah. You know, something that vulnerable, whether it was a hawk or an eagle or a fox okay. or whatever, they had to get up and suck or they were dead. And nature has a way of working things out, you know. And, and I heard St. Croix averages 2.1 births. 2.1. Have you kept track of it, yours? It, it depends how you take care of the sheep. Yeah. If you get them up and uh, flush them, they call the term flushing, which means before you turn the rams in, you get them up and you feed them some grain and really get them nice and fat and juicy and all that and then put the rams in. They, they drop more eggs, you'll get more twins. But my question is, what's it cost you to get those twins? Yeah. I don't feed any grain. And so this year, yeah. uh, we've averaged as high as 1.6 to 1.7 lambs per ewe. Okay. This year it was 1.35. Okay, so I'm not going to sweat if I don't get twins then. No, and, and Justin, the, what you're going to have is, is ewe lambs. It's their first time. Yeah, okay. So don't freak out if you don't get twins. Okay. I mean, you'll get a few, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. But now on the second time lambing, you're going to have a whole lot yeah. more twins than you will singles. Can you share why? You wouldn't want to feed a sheep grain. A lot of, I mean, a lot. Yep. That's a shocker to a lot of people. Uh, you just got to remember when you feed a, a sheep grain, there's two things that happen. One is you're growing hoof. You better get your hoof trimmers out, because grain grows horn and it grows hoof. Mm. And if you like trimming the feet on your sheep, feed them grain. <laughs> that's what you're gonna. That's have. the only reason you don't do it. And, and the other one is, <laughs> when you feed them grain, it makes the meat rot. Mm. So let me explain that. Yeah. When you get grain fat in a sheep, the mus the intramuscular fat in sheep, in other words, the marbling, and you get fat all through the meat, the shelf life on it just plummets. Uh, New Zealand lamb, it's all natural. It's all grass fed, and that you can put a chunk of that in your freezer, and it'll be there for a year, no problem. Our sheep the same way, but if you mm. have a a feedlot lamb mm. and you butcher that dude, you better eat it. Is this going to go rank, rank on you probably six months? It okay. just doesn't have the freezer life. Okay. So why That's would you do that? Yeah. Other than, you know, the health benefits. Uh, Grass-fed lamb's a lot healthier for you than grain-fed than grain fed is. Mm. I think it's cool here. I, I just put these limbs in here. I, cut, I brought my chainsaw over here about, I don't know, three hours ago. And I cut a bunch of invasive autumnalis. They look like a forest in there when I put it in there. I can't believe it. I mean, there's lambs. They were just full of the only leaves they haven't got. You threw the lambs in there. What's that? Or you you cut them in place? I cut them in. in place. No, I brought them in. Oh, I, you brought them in. I had a whole pickup okay. load of autumnalis. Okay. Autumnalis. <laughs> I drug them in here and I threw them on the ground, and those sheep absolutely cleaned them up. Yeah, they'll browse, won't they? Oh man. Are they as good as a goat? Uh, no, because well, let me let me For browsing. They're a lot better than a goat. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a goat's a lot better. <laughs> a goat's a lot better than a sheep. Now let me explain that. A goat, if you have more woody stuff, they'll climb up and get it, and they'll actually stand on each other's backs with their front feet oh. to get up high enough to get it. And uh, sheep, they won't stand on their hind legs. Goats will. Goats okay. will graze on their hind legs so they can get higher. But the sheep, I don't think there's a goat out here that you can keep in with one hot wire. 
Now, I may be yeah, wrong, no. but I haven't seen it. Somebody could prove me wrong, but by gosh, these sheep are keeping in with one hot wire. How are you keeping them in with one hot wire? People aren't going to believe that either. Well, we're going to see it in a little okay. bit. We're going to go right. down this hill, but the, the biggest thing is they don't get hungry. Don't okay. let your sheep get hungry, because if they get hungry, they will move. And they'll move on their own. They don't need you to move. Because that mm. one wire, it's a psychological barrier. They get used to seeing it, and by God, they're not going to go through it. Okay. But you do have to put your posts a lot closer together. Okay. So on cattle, we might go, uh, let's say, 60 to 70 feet. With a sheep fence, uh, about 15 feet is all you want to go. And you've got to keep that poly braid. Don't use poly wire. you got to use poly braid. Poly braid has got twice the shock and conductivity of poly wire. And you want to use a wire that's called, uh, from Powerflex, yep. it's called mixed metal. It's got st six steel filaments and three copper. It will knock you into next week when you touch that. And the other thing about sheep, keep the fence hot. If you've got a little wimpy charger that's putting out two or 3,000 volts, you're not going to keep them sheep in. you got to have something putting out eight. I mm. mean, it, it'll light a sheep up, a sheep up when they touch it. And uh, it, yeah. guard dogs, they don't appreciate it too much either. So what are you powering that fence with to get it up to eight? Uh, I'm using a plug-in type charger. Okay. I'm real big on plug-ins. We've got uh, the Stafix, which is the big okay. one. That's a 36 joule. But Justin is powering five farms. That one charger is. Okay. Uh, there's about 580. And there's more than that. There's about 780 acres here, all fastened together. Mm. And um, so it's powering all those farms. And if you look at look at the vegetative load right here. <laughs> oh my gosh. People say, but Greg, I gotta I gotta weed eat my fence. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I've never weeded you that fence since I put it in 17 years ago. But here's the key, folks. You cannot turn your fencer off. Do not turn your fencer off. Now, you can turn it off if you need to go work on it. Yeah. But don't leave it off for a day or two. Because what happens when you turn it off, you've got all these green leaves growing uh. up and touching that. And as it's getting shocked, it's taking the sap out of the, tr out of the leaf. If you turn it off, it gets a free ride. It grows all up on that fence, and you're going to have 40,000 green leaves, which are ground rods. You don't have any charge. And it may take a week for that charger to kill all that vegetation. Okay. So for a week, you're not going to have any electricity in your fence. Don't turn it off. And I'm a big believer in not putting a lot of switches around the farm. I used to have all these turn-off switches. If you get a, if you get a Stafix charger, Stafix best charger in the world from powerflex <laughs> <laughs> it's got and brought a, to you by it's, <laughs> it's yeah and brought to you by powerflex it's got a remote control switch on it you can reach out there and go boom hit it turns it off you don't need to go to the box to unplug it that's nice and you can reach out there and go on it turns it right back on wow but the biggest thing about that tester is it has an arrow on it telling you what direction your ground is Oh, and that's neat. So you're not walking all day long looking for it. You know right where it's at if you hold that test run. It'll take you to your ground. Wow. It's going beep, 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 beep. And you just keep going. And the arrow keeps pointing. And if you go past your ground, it's going to go beep, beep, beep. You walk past it. It's mm -hmm. back there. Uh, and it also has a meter on, or it has a reading on there for amps. Folks, there's two readings in electricity, volts and amps. It takes volts to push amps, okay? Well... When you see amp reading on that meter, you got an issue. Hmm. If you, let's say, 40 to 50 amps, you better start looking because you've got something touching that fence. And it's probably not vegetation. Okay. It's probably metal. Oh, okay. You've got a metal post touching that dude. Mm -hmm. Or you might have had a deer come by and throw a piece of old barbed wire up on it from an existing fence. It's metal. It's usually not vegetative something. So that... When you uh, look at your meter at the end of the month and you pay your meter bill, you're paying for kilowatt hours. Kilowatt hours is being turned by amps, dead ground. So like uh, if your wife turns on the dryer, that thing's spinning big time. That's, that's amps. Same way on a charger. If you've got a dead ground on it, it's going to start turning that meter. But here's the misnomer about electricity on fences. It doesn't use any electricity. Oh, really? 
doesn't use any. As long as you don't have an amp loading on it. Oh, wow. Because volts, volts will not turn that meter. It's amps. Oh. <laughs> so how much does our... Well, this, this was a brand new <laughs> meter on this farm. A brand yeah. new meter. Mm -hmm. it, went, it was on for a year. And it had all this fence on. I mean, we had miles of fence. We got sheep fence all over this. Four strands running everywhere. And I called the guy up. I said, uh, at the electric meter, I said, your, your, your meter is no good. <laughs> and he goes, what do you mean? I said, it hasn't turned over one kilowatt hour in a year. Really? What do you got on it? I said, I got electric fence. He said, go out there and take a steel post and lay on it. So I stuck the steel post in the ground and I flopped it over on it. And man, I mean, that meter took off. <laughs> it started turning. That's what it needed. It needed a dead ground. Mm -hmm. So keep your fence clean wow. with metal. Don't let metal touch it. You had your clean, fence clean and you had no power bill. No power. It doesn't take any power to an electric fencer at all. So people that are freaking out about, well, I don't want to increase my electric bill. It doesn't use any electric. Yeah. So why did you go with the St. Croix? I went with the St. Croix because I didn't want to worm sheep. Are I they... don't think worming sheep is sustainable. Why not? Because as you get older, time flies by, and I got more things to do than worm sheep. <laughs> You're all about value, valuing your time Absolutely. with things you want to do. So how did you find the sheep? I found a guy that, uh, I mean, I, I was on the internet, and I just got really, really lucky. Um, I found a neighbor that had stuck to his guns with the St. Croix, and uh, he... Uh, he never uh, wormed them. Hmm. He let them die. Okay. And the ones that died, of course, they didn't. They only die once. And um, <laughs> so the surviving sheep were the ones that he kept, and those are the ones he built his flock out of. And I was fortunate enough to get hmm. seven ram lambs from him, and some ewes, and that was our base of our small flock, and we just kind of built from there. But those rams. Jan and I isolated them. We turned them out. We gathered manure on them. We put them in a trailer, and then when they jump out, they poop. They poop, and we had ear tags on them, so we knew mm -hmm. which one, which manure, went which each ram. Took it to the vet, and they they put it underneath the microscope, and the vet called me up. He was hot. He goes, "Why'd you bring me?" He said, "I got more things to do than look at sheep that's been wormed." He said, "You shouldn't have wormed these sheep before you brought the manure in." I'm like, "Sir, I didn't worm them." Yes, you did. He said, "There's one that didn't have any." There was none. Wow. Not even point oh 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 nothing. There was no That's worm. unheard of. There was nothing in there. He said, I've never ever seen that without worming. I said, I didn't worm. And what were the other two? And the other two was like point zero five. What's a healthy rate? Like when would it start being alarming so people would know? Oh, shoot. Um, you just, I mean, you can't hardly take a sample on sheep and not find some. Yeah. yeah. And all sheep have a little bit in it. But those two rams, the, the two of the three were just through the roof wow um and that's what we use to start okay. our flock okay. with and we still have their ancestors in here and, you know the sun's out of those and we just don't buy any rams anymore we just try and try and raise what we can do you have any of them that ever get sick with them uh we got them all up uh yesterday and got all the withers out of there and uh some other sheep some call ewes there wasn't a single animal in the whole flock that had a dirty tail Wow. That's unheard of. And you don't snip their tail? No. no. Again, you don't want to go around cutting tails out. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> if you don't have wool sheep, if you got but wool sheep. people say you're going to get parasites if you have a tail. Hey, if you got wool sheep, you better cut the tail off. Okay, yeah. all right. They right. call that fly strike. Yeah, so St. Croix is a hair sheep. Yes. Yeah. Wool okay. sheep have a big woolly tail, and when the, when the ewe lambs, there's blood gets in that wool. Mm. And in those blood in the wool, you've got maggots, and they'll eat the butt out okay. of the sheep. Okay. On hair sheep, I've never seen, and they call that fly strike. Okay. I've never had it on a, on a. Now surely you've had the, you've had one get worm since you and oh yeah, since you oh, bought yeah. that first. Yeah. Her, so what do you do? Well, if do we can get them, them up to the crowd, a lot of times they you find them that they just you know they 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 go to the happy hunting grounds. Okay. And uh, sometimes we'll sell them. If it's in the fall, okay. we see some with dirty tails. We'll just get them up and sell them. So you cold? I've never wormed a sheep. Okay. I'm, I'm going to stick to my guns on that. Good. So what, what are the two times of the year, Greg, that are is our most demanding time for sheep? The most demanding time? What do you mean? 
When do we work sheep? When when do we oh. put the man hours into the sheep? Well, in July. Oh, yeah. okay. In July, you got to get the rams out. Okay. So the rams are put in okay. um, December 1st. That gives you five months, which gives you May 1st lambing okay. in Missouri. Now, that's different. I just had a guy here from Iowa this morning, and I said, don't don't put your rams in the 1st of December. It's still cold up in Iowa in May. Yeah, okay. So he's going to put them in, I think he said around late, uh, the end of Memorial Day. So basically, you want to birth after frost date. Absolutely. You don't want to chase the green. So where yeah. we are, we're May 10th. May 10th, so yeah. I wouldn't put them in until uh, December 10th. Okay. Yeah. Five months, okay. The worst thing I think you can do to a sheep is put them in a building. And okay. And if you put them in a building, you're going to get parasites. Okay. It's just a matter of time. And I've heard people say, well, you know, I'll, I'll do a deep bedding pack. And I'm like, no, you're not going to get rid of them parasites. They're, they're there. And you've got to get them out here on the land. Let the sunlight clean them up move them that's where sheep belong okay um everybody gets them up in missouri to to, to lamb i shouldn't say everybody i'm putting everybody in one window <laughs> a lot of people mm -hmm. and it's just not missouri a lot of people want an easter lamb in other words they want to they yes. want to lamb them in january and they'll sell yeah. a lamb at easter that's ready to eat when you do that you better have a big building and they call it jugging so you put them up in these little crates the mother before she lambs she lambs in there. Man, you talk about labor intense. Mm. And a great environment for all kinds of nasty diseases. Keep them out where they need to be. This, this is where the sheep belongs, out on yeah. the land. And you don't have to do all that other yeah. stuff. Would then, it be a... Go ahead, Jan. And then our second time of really working the sheep is now when we're calling, getting ready for winter, um, selling rams yeah. and ewes and dogs. And um, so it's very labor no labor really to speak of other yeah. than two times a year except moving them you move on them well, yeah. once or twice a day once okay. and sometimes if we give them a little bigger paddock maybe twice but i'm gonna tell you what for somebody that doesn't is has a hectic schedule and is busy or maybe they're getting older they don't have the energy mm -hmm. sheep are your deal really oh my gosh i told wow. jan after this last winter i'm like you know we get older and don't want to fight the, the weather anymore we just go all sheep why are they so much easier than cows? They'll feed themselves better than a cow will. They'll eat more? Their foot. They can push back snow. Mm. Cows, oh. cows, like will take, cows will push their nose through it and eat, but a darn, a darn sheep has got a foot like a deer. They'll pull all the snow back mm. and they can feed themselves. Mm. Uh, you can put sheep in woods in the wintertime and dry oak leaves and they'll come out of there fat as a pig. You put a cow in there, she'll starve to death. Mm. This stuff right here, you just lock them in. If I lock sheep in this lane, they would clean all that stuff up. But we're moving our sheep fast enough, it doesn't happen. But sheep can make a living on stuff that cows can't. Okay. And so they're just a lot easier to to manage. When you said you got to make sure a sheep's well fed, keep them in, how do you know when a sheep has had enough, is getting enough to eat? I can tell by looking at the landscape. Okay. Um, when a lot of it gets all walked down on the ground, there's there's a ton of feed left here, okay? Yeah. But you don't want to leave them here much longer because they they kind of. Well, let's go down. I'll show you. There's a, there's a weed down here. It's called giant ragweed. And uh, when I turned them in here, man, there was a big old thick grove of it down here. Well, when I drove by today, I couldn't. I, I just couldn't believe it. Really? They had already cleaned every leaf off the giant ragweed. Is, are we in their paddock right now? We are. For today? Yeah. So they were moved in here yesterday? Yesterday. One day. How many sheep are in this paddock? Uh, there's probably around 180. 180, and there's. This is probably. I can't see the whole perimeter of the paddock. What, two acres? Yeah, this, this paddock is around 10. But the paddock they're on right now is split in two, so they're on like four acres. Okay. All right. And this is the yeah, this is the dog, the guard dog. Yeah. Feeder. I want to I want to show people this. Um, so it has a. Uh, you can put a full 50 pound bag in there plus another one, half of another one. It'll yeah. hold 75 pounds. The this, key the key is to keep it up off the, the ground. Of okay. Now, and this is a dog feeder. This is a dog feeder. Pet lodger. Yeah. An ad by Pet Lodge. Ready now. <laughs> Keep it up off the ground. If you don't, you'll get ants in there. 
and it, it draws moisture from the bottom up. So in a rainy period, your dog feet will mold and rot. Keep it up off the ground. We have a little chain on here. This is our toe. Mm. So we just put that over the ball on our four wheeler. You don't have to go very far with it. Like from here to, you know, 50 feet, you can just pull it by hand. I just use the landscaping timbers and staples. And these are pig panels. Mm. And I just stapled it on there. And then at the back, I've got three boards going across for rigidity. The yep. dogs have to get down their side, the big ones. Mm -hmm. The young dogs kind of go underneath like that, but a big dog, he's got to get on the side and pull himself through there. Folks, that's nothing for a big dog to go under. Okay. And that, that from there up to here is 10 inches. From the ground up is yeah, 10 Yeah, so he's got to be thicker than 10 inches. Yeah, I've seen them, I mean, they get down, they have to pull sometimes, but they can get in there. This door, uh, when it's faced correctly, you want the door to be facing south. And it does have a magnet in there. But if you have it facing south, when you get a hard rain, we never get a hard rain out of the south. It's always out of the west or the east. So always make sure the opening on it is facing south and you won't get your dog feed wet. Okay. Dog feed's expensive, you know, and, you, and dogs don't like wet feed. I wouldn't like wet feed either. So yeah. keep your dog feed dry. If it gets wet, don't make them eat it. Dig it out of there and give it to your chickens or something, but don't. Don't leave wet dog feet in there. All you're going to do is uh, draw a pest yeah. into there. If you have puppies, you're going to have to put um, a small rock or brick just to open it a little bit. Cause, yeah. Because they uh, need to learn how to get in there. On puppies, we take a brick and we put it in the right like that. Okay. They don't know any better. They don't know how to push that door open. But once the puppies learn, then you can take the brick out. Now, I think I know what you're going to say because you move your sheep every day. Because somebody would ask me to ask you, could you could you put chicken feed in something like this, where chickens could come in there and eat that, and and the sheep yeah. and the sheep wouldn't. Or what do you? Yes. Because the sheep can't get in this. Right. No. So okay. theoretically, somebody could put chicken feed in you, there. You could. If they're not going to move their sheep every day, or if they're going to move their chickens dog, with their sheep. If you didn't have guard dogs, the guard dogs are probably going to yeah. eat the chicken feed. Okay. And that leads me to ask, why would a lamb want to eat dog food? Oh, or grain. Once they get a flavor, once they get a taste for it. Like, why do we eat candy? <laughs> okay, okay. You know, why do kids right. want to eat candy? So it is bad for them, but they do want I it. went on a farm <laughs> where a guy, we sold him a couple guard dogs, and he was having trouble with them. He had goats, and I said, well, dogs are, you can see every rib on them. I said, where's your dog feeder at? Well, you know, I hand feed them every day. I'm like, you do? Yeah, yeah, it's time to feed them. He reached over and duck, poured the feet on the ground, and about 75 ghosts came in and just knocked the crap out of the dogs and ate wow. every bite of it. Them dogs weren't getting any feed. And this and was were, a meat feed. And they were, killing his, they were killing his kids, the goat kids, and eating them. I thought the dogs were starving to death. So these... these. You can't let them get a taste of it. He so these the herbivores will eat meat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, and if you're going to have a dog, you don't train your sheep or your goats to eat Mm. You, oh, okay. You just can't train them to eat to eat uh, dog feed because once you do, you're done. Okay. Uh, especially a goat. Goats. Goats. This is not a goat-proof feeder, by the way. No, I'm saying this is chill. Go, goats would be in here. Look how short be in this that is. Feeder within 30 seconds. Yep. And they they just they just jump over it, or they climb under yeah. it. The best goat feeder is one that's built like this, but you put a round barrel right here on the front. It's a 30 gallon barrel and it comes up through here and you put a rug, you put a rug over the entrance on that side. And that goat sticks his head in that barrel, he ain't going in there because mm. he can't see through it. Okay. <laughs> He's like, there might be a coyote on the other side of that barrel. <laughs> he won't go in blind. He's not going to go in blind, but if he can see through it, look out. He's yeah, going to go yeah. underneath. Bouncing yeah. a little bit. Back to mulch question. Watch your so head. deep Watch bedding. Your head. Watch your head. Watch your head, that's all. Would deep bedding be such a terrible idea in the winter when you don't have parasites? Yeah, that would hurt. Um, I think if you start locking your sheep in a building in the wintertime, you're going to have trouble. Really? Yeah. With what? Parasites. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think you're going to have trouble. It's not just the summertime. You're going to have foot issues. Okay. You're going to have sickness in your sheep. Um, it's just, everybody says, but their sheep, they got to have shelter. Well, if it's 20 below zero in the wind in wind chill, 
our sheep can get down in a draw and they're fine. Uh, we've had sheep for 17 years. We've never had a building ever. We're a lot colder than you all are. Are you? How oh. cold do you get? Uh, we can get up to 30 below. Wind, oh, wow. Wind chill. Yeah. Wind chill. Uh, regular yeah. straight, probably the coldest temperature we ever had is probably 12 below. Uh, I was going to show you, these are all giant ragweeds in here. They're walking through. These are just the stems. Look at yeah. that. There isn't anything left. So will that die? No, it'll re it'll revegetate. That's what I love about giant ragweed. Look, okay, look yeah. up here. Look okay. at all the stems. So this this weed is not a problem because it's oh, good it's, for your it's sheep. a wonderful food. Okay. It's not common ragweed. It's giant ragweed. There's a big okay. difference. See the stems over there? Yeah. Yeah. They just they just cleaned them. Okay. They just cleaned them. Do you? So I'm looking at that, Justin. I'm I'm gonna make an executive decision. We're gonna go move the sheep. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That'd be awesome. So what made you decide we need to move the sheep? Because all the ragweeds cleaned up. Okay. There, there is no leaves left. Okay. They're not yeah. eating the fescue. And here. Too. Why not? Why not the fescue? The fescue is not as tasty to them right now. Okay. They're, they're after the weeds. This is a this is a ironweed. Okay. This is a different one. And they worked that ironweed over pretty good. They need to be right. moved. So they, you've already got a fence set up ready for the move. Yep. We're gonna go down here and take the poly wire, and I'm just gonna roll it back. Cool. And I'm going to go sheep, 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 and they're going to go charging through. Cool. And then instead of putting it right back where it's at, I'm going to move it over about 50 feet on the other side of their water tank. Okay. So they got a water tank down here. And you're not going to move the water tank? No, it's, it's permanent. Yeah. So how it's, many paddocks can you run off that one water tank? Uh, when you say paddocks, in the summertime, uh, we can get three moves out of here. We're giving them bigger areas right now because we don't want them to graze the plants down too short. That big bottom out there, uh, we'll get, oh shoot, when we strip graze that, we may get two weeks out of that big bottom. And up here, we'll get three moves. So that one little tank there is supplying, oh gosh, probably 12 paddocks. Okay. 12 temporary paddocks. Are you running a lane to get back to it? Yeah, well, just spokes, wire spokes. You might okay. say spokes. So you start at your tank and you run a, a, a spoke out. And the next time... Wedge. You'll have to show me what a spoke a is when a wedge. we get down there. A yeah, a wedge. And so this, this is a good place for lambing, Justin. Okay. Um, because when they're lambing, they, they have lambing spots and they stay there for like a couple of days. Mm -hmm. So you don't want the flock to get terribly far ahead of the the mm. the baby lambs okay because if you try to make them stay with their mamas and the with the flock you're going to have orphans right now they can come in right here and get their water drink, or they can drink out of the pond oh, yeah. up there and tomorrow how they're going to get here i'm going to move this wire over on that side of the water tank so okay this, this paddock's going to be hooked onto the same tank okay. so to, it's okay that near the water they've had they've they've been on this grass today and they're going to be on it again tomorrow this this one yeah but look at it I know. Why haven't they trampled this down? Because they're probably getting the water out of that pond up there. Okay. Okay. But we're going to go ahead and move the wire. Jan, I want you to pull the first one, two, three, four, five, six. Pull the, pull the first six posts. And I'm going to reel this up about where the sheep are. Don't pull any more than six. Okay. So how, how is this not on? Okay. So here it is. Okay. It, this, these are my hot wires. This is my permanent high tensile 12 gauge, 180,000 PSI wire high tensile and so to power it up we just take this and wrap it around there three times okay like that and then when you hook it on there there's no fair doing that <laughs> that's going to oh, yeah. knock you into next week yeah because you're holding you're i'm holding the metal yeah. oh. you got to hold this okay you, you always find a post find a fiberglass post or whatever post type post you're using hopefully it's not steel and just hook it on there, drop it, I'm done. I'm powered up. Hmm. Because this wire is going through that handle, the handle's wrapped with the poly braid, yeah. and it's pushing 8,000 volts out through this. And I guess that reel is also a PowerFlex reel. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. He's not brand loyal. No, I go for what works. Terragate, Terragate, Terragate geared reels are the best reels ever made. Okay. They're made in New Zealand. Um, I wish we did make them in the United States, but it, this is a heck of a reel. Why um, is it so good? Because of this one issue right here. Um, O'Brien makes a decent reel, but their locking mechanism absolutely sucks. Mm -hmm. Okay? As you're going across the paddock on a four-wheeler, because we, this is sitting in a four-wheeler. 
And as this thing's going out, we may be driving 20 miles an hour. If this drops down because you hit a bump, guess what happens? That reel goes flying. The reel goes flying out of your handle. It lands on the ground and it breaks. It hmm. breaks this. Folks, this is a $65 reel. And if the and if the wire holds on long enough and this doesn't come out, you're gonna break your poly braid in two. Now you got a knot in your poly braid. O'Brien has this little wimpy plastic deal. If you blow on it hard enough, it'll drop down. And now you've, you've broken your wire. This is a good locking mechanism. And it's, I mean, look at that. It doesn't take that much to... I'm not an engineer, but I bet you I could take an O'Brien reel and build a better locking mechanism they've got. Yeah. And I put that in my book, and they didn't change it yet. <laughs> they haven't. Yeah, you even gave them a memo, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I told them. I said, They're guys, your, memo. your locking mechanism sucks, and they won't change. But people are resistant to change. Even companies are resistant. Shit! Shit, 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 shit. So if you look up through here, Justin, you can see the graze line. Okay. This is, well, look at that. They just stripped that. Yeah. They're ready to move. So we're going to leave the rest of the post in. And if y'all weren't here, I'm just go sheep, 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 and they all come charging down this hill. Yeah. They're not going to do that with this group of people. No. So we're just going to reel it up, let them go through, and then we'll put it back in. So um, you don't we, have to pull any more posts. Would you have a tighter paddock if it was winter so they would eat this down to the ground? No, because I can go around my farm twice in the winter. Can you? Yeah. No hay for these guys? None. Zero. We had the worst hay and worst hay. We had the worst winter in Missouri history last year, probably in 50 years. Mm. And those sheep were in 24 inches of snow on the very back of the farm on a one wire fence that was buried under the snow and they didn't move. They stayed there. Mm. And they cleaned off the whole south side of a hill where the sun was shining. Cleaned it. And I drove back to my tractor and blade. It took me almost two hours to blade a path back there to them. It was that deep. And when I got back there, the sheep looked at me like, what the heck are you doing back here? <laughs> they were all fat. There wasn't any dead ones. And we were struggling to keep the cows fed. This is 10 days into the snowstorm. Mm. And the sheep are like, hell, we're good. Get out of here. <laughs> and I'm like, man, you talking about some tough sheep. So are they, you're not moving them every day in the winter then? No. Okay. No. No, about every two days. You can see this. Okay, the and that's because the... Oh, yeah, about every two days. <laughs> about every two days. <laughs> you take a rest in the winter. Yeah, yeah we, we take so, a rest. In the so how'd you move them during that snowstorm? You didn't move we them. We didn't. We couldn't get to them. But they, but they were just they were kicking fine. it out of the way and finding it. They were Because they were sitting on something like this. Yes. And they'll eat that fescue. Yes. Did you say, honey? We didn't have to take water to them or anything. Oh, that's really? a beautiful thing about sheep. Mm. As long as sheep are grazing, they don't need water. Really? In the winter time. They will the not winter. drink it. Okay. You can put it out there until your face falls off. They ain't gonna drink it. Why not? Because they're getting moisture out of the forage. Mm. They don't need water. So how much water do they need? Uh, not very much. Maybe a quart to a half a gallon. On These aren't, I mean, Full look grind. at those sheep. Okay. A, a mature ewe, you're looking at 110 to 120 pounds. A wool sheep shoots some little gals, you can put a saddle on them and ride them. You know, two, oh, okay, okay. 220 pounds. So they're going to drink more water. So, yeah, we're talking about a different animal then. We'll, I'm taking it, we're talking about a different animal here. Wool, wool sheep versus hair sheep. Exactly. And we ought to clarify with everybody, you're raising these for... For meat. 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 Or breeding stock. Breeding stock. Yeah. For meat. Yes. These are not wool sheep. They are not wool sheep. Do you have a problem with wool sheep, or are yes. you cool with people doing wool sheep? I don't know why anybody run wool sheep. <laughs> why? Why not? Too much work. Yeah, there's no money in well, it. Well, here, let me give you the let me give you some figures. It takes 25 percent of what a sheep. Here they come, Greg. Here they come. Yeah, they're coming. 25 percent of what they eat goes to produce wool. The wool it costs you more money to get the wool off their back than you can sell it for. Why would you do that? Hmm. It's a net loss. And it's a pain to go find somebody to shear them unless you shear your own. And my back is not that stout. Do they have fly problems like a cow does? Sheep, no. sheep, 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 sheep. Dan, you say no. They don't attract flies as much as cow would? No. No, they will have flies. And what they'll do, they'll make a big clump of circle and they'll all put their heads in together. But they don't really have the... They're not that bad. What you're seeing right now is a sea tick. 
Nazi. Okay. Those Look at that. You have three guard dogs on 120 Five. sheep. Five on 120. There. Yeah. Okay. There's two old. There they are. That's mammoth, and the little female we never named her, but you can't touch either one of those dogs. Okay. So I don't have to worry about anybody stealing them. They bark. They'll. I mean, if you come out here and you're a stranger, they'll just bark their heads off. Somebody's having to feed hay to a lamb in the winter <clears throat> because they don't have enough land to. If you're gonna to, feed to, hay to, to them in to the winter time. Pile. How much are they going to eat, or what should they know about feeding hay? Probably uh, a good rule, if they're not getting anything to eat, you just pencil in about 3% of their body weight. Okay. So if you know if a lamb weighs 100 pounds, 3, three, pounds. three pounds? Yeah, 3 yep. pounds. Now here's the deal about sheep. They don't, they're not real crazy about just pure grass hay. They do a lot better if you got a little legume in there, whether it's a, yeah. a clover or a little bit of alfalfa or bird's foot trefoil or lespedeza. Just pure grass hay, they'll use it for bedding more than they'll eat it. <laughs> uh. They like laying on it. They'll walk on it, but they don't really eat. Our sheep won't eat hay hardly, but I don't buy really good high quality hay for my cows. I just feed them whatever I've got, which is usually normally just grass hay. Okay. Uh, you see this? See and your this, sheep won't eat that, that junk hay. See hmm. this this big tall plant behind you, Justin? Mm -hmm. This is called the uh, Indian grass. There's a row of it right here, going down through here. Well, heck, it goes clear up that hill. This was a big round bale that I unrolled for the sheep in the winter time. Oh. The sheep came in here and laid on it and stomped on it, and look what came up. You're Indian, saying it brought this up. Absolutely. That, and that's a good thing. Yeah. I, when the Indian grass that I bought, it was just covered full of seed. You can almost see the line of it is what you're telling me. Now this, yeah. this one right here is actually, th this is, uh, okay. this is different. This is a big blue stem. See the seed heads are different. Oh, yeah. This is a turkey foot. That one's a shaggy booger. Mm. That's, that's Indian grass over there. It's where the big bells were fed. We fed big blue and Indian grass. So. Uh, if you can find some of this in big bales and feed it on your pasture, you will get a lot of it to start to come up just by feeding it on your field. So you put down the hay for the seeds? Yeah. I got this I got this hay. The guy was embarrassed. He's going to throw it in a ditch. I bought 200 bales of it for $10 a bale. <laughs> and it was over mature. It, was all, it all had full seed on it. And the animals didn't need it very well, but boy, I got some good fertility <laughs> out of it. Well, look yeah, at the grass. See, you can see the strip. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we, we see this all over when we unroll our bales, especially the natives. They just come up. So okay. This is $30 a pound if you've got to buy it. The seed. $30. So it's, it's pretty pricey. What do you think about cows and sheep having a relationship with each other, working together in some way? I think it's the best. If you can do it, if you can figure out how to do it, because the sheep, of course, shares. The sheep and the cattle have different parasites, and so the sheep ingest the cow parasite, the cow ingests the sheep parasite, mm. and so the two are acting like vacuum cleaners, they're sucking up each other's parasites. Mm. And it's a dead end host. That parasite can't complete his life cycle. No, I didn't know that. And so that is the very best. If you can pull that off, you got cows out there, they're just, they're ingesting sheep parasites. Well, the closer you make your animals eat to the ground, mm. the more parasites they're going to ingest. Okay. And so if you can keep your animals grazing up here in the top part of the canopy, the parasites are not living on the tips of their plants. They're down here on the ground floor. I heard four inches. Is that about right? Yeah, because they're out of the sun. A parasite can't take sun on the body. It cooks him like that. So the people that are continuously grazing and not moving their animals, that's why, they're, that's why they got a worm. The animals are just loaded down with parasites. Hmm. Ours are not because we don't make them graze that way. Tonight, those sheep are going to pick out a campsite here. When it gets dark, and I can tell you exactly where it's going to be, right up there. It's always on the highest point on the paddy. And that's instinct. They go to the highest point so they can see predators coming at them at night to try and kill them. Mm -hmm. 
up here, right, right there by that gate. That was the highest point. I saw a lot of sheep manure up there. That's where the highest point is. Okay. So when you move your sheep, they don't go back. They, they can't. They can't go back to the same campsite night after night after night. Because this is what infects them. They get a big dose of their own manure, and they lay in that, and they're standing in it, and they're sleeping in it. They're going to pick up parasites there. So they get parasite from the manure. From the manure. And then they get parasites from short grass. Short grass. And if you leave them in one area for a long time, there's going to be a lot of short grass. Okay. Because, you know, the, the old ranchers called the western sheep shepherds, uh, they called the sheep on the west maggots, range maggots. Because hmm. they were convinced that the sheep were destroying the landscape for their cattle. Well, if the two could have got together, the sheep and the cattlemen, they both would have made more money. Hmm. But they, so, they hung the sheep herders. <laughs> oh my. What's yeah. ideal then? That the cows, if they're working together on the parasites, should they be in there at the same time? Absolutely. Yep. And okay. that's something that we, we're still thinking about how yeah, we can I mean, do you're that. Yeah, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Because a sheep needs a shorter fence. Well, here's the kicker. Okay. We ran our, we ran our uh, thousand pound bulls on this this spring and they didn't jump it. Yeah, and this was, what was this? This inches, was only 10 inches 10 to tall. 12 inches. You've the calculated. Not jump it. And that's even with the guard dogs in there with them, chasing them for the first okay. five minutes. Hmm. Then bulls would not hop over that fence. So you could use yeah. the same sheep fence okay. on really well-trained cattle. Ours are really well-trained. I wouldn't go to the cell barn and buy some cows and expect that 10-inch wire to no. stop No. So when are you going to put them together, your cows and sheep? Uh, when we can figure out how to do the road moves. Okay. We have a lot of road moves, and we're going by people's farms that have uh, pets barking at us. Oh, okay. And our guard dogs will kill every pet between here and Jimmy Oh, okay, Park. okay. That's not the way to have happy neighbors, is no. kill their pets. I, I would be <laughs> upset. So, tell them, Greg, how we went down to one wire. We didn't always have one wire. No, no. two years ago you, you well, had two we wires. Had three. We had three. Uh, starting out, the first one was actually a lot lower. It was right there. We had one here and we had one up here. Um, so we went with uh, three wires for about three or four months. And the ones that got out, we ate. There would be one that would get out. We just eat him. Because you, if you, okay. go, out there, if you okay. go out there to get him, you don't know which one it is. It jumps back in the paddock. It'll run back. And so we'd just go out and we would process him on the pasture with a rifle. And he made a good eating experience. Train. They'll train every sheep in here to be a fence jumper. They'll train them. Not they only will. will they be a punk and repeat. And they'll train them in less than seven days. So that's why you do it so fast. Quick. Quick. Don't let it go on. Because the next time you come out, there'll be three out. The next time, there'll be 27 out. We learned the hard way. Now, I'm going to ask this for a lot of people. Killing them out there, are you setting an example? No. They, they don't know. They don't recognize they, death. Yeah. I used to go they, on a sheep hunt. <laughs> I used to go on a sheep hunt every month. That's yeah. the way we processed them. We had yeah. a, a walker plant that was not state inspected. Yeah. And I could bring in eight or ten sheep that I dispatched out here okay. on the field. And, uh, yeah, so they don't recognize death at all. But yeah. We, we didn't that's do what that. I found. And we, that's when Greg Pitt was working in town. And he got a call. We had 40 sheep up on F. Okay. They were going to town. They were going down the blacktop. And I was at work. That's when I saw work in town. It was because we didn't think, oh, it was a oh, big deal. It was awful. What do you mean? They left. The sheep left. They, they got out. They got, they got out. out. One oh, got okay. Out, I didn't. And they were on F. F's a road. Yeah. For people yeah. that don't that's know. That's a road we came. Yeah, in that's on. about yeah. what five miles from here. No, it's just right up the hill. Oh, about okay. a mile. They okay. were headed toward Harrisburg, and um, they okay. called me at work and said, "Greg, you might want to get home. You got a whole flock of sheep heading to town." <laughs> And I was by myself. Were the guard dog with them? Uh, no. Nope. Killing everything no, on its way? No, the guard, <laughs> no, the guard dog stayed with the good sheep. Not all of them got out. Okay. About a third of them Okay. Did. And so I ran by the house, and I, I, I don't even think I went by the house. I just had a five-gallon bucket in my truck. I threw some rocks in it to make we it sound like grain. To make it sound like grain. Mm, and I started shaking that bucket. And uh, that one old pet you, she heard that, but he's got me a treat. <laughs> yeah, I got you a treat. <laughs> I had a treat for her, all right. And I shook that bucket, and she followed me down that gravel road and brought the whole flock with her. And I walked her right into that corral up there. I closed the gate behind them, and I sold every one of them. That was it. Took care of it. 
Hey, Jan, some say Greg Judy's no nonsense kind of guy. Is that true? That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I've I heard that more than once. Huh? I'm going to wonder when I'm going to be shot. <laughs> hey, you better keep those mills a coming, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't pull your post up and you put your wire back in, it's really not that big of an issue. I mean, you just... And folks, normally we don't have to roll it up this far, but because we had everybody with us, I did. But they're ready to move. I mean, look at them. They're all out grazing. Your animals, when you move them, are actively grazing. They're hungry. Yeah, okay. see, that, see that giant ragweed down there? They're going to go after that. That's going to be just nothing but stems by tomorrow. And they weren't this actively grazing. No, they're all just standing up there looking at so us. So it's really just, if somebody's not, a lot of these people, Greg, are not going to know very little. So they just really need to just go out and just observe the animals. Watch, watch your animals. I don't have my phone, so if your animals aren't grazing when you go into the yeah. paddock, Either they're full or there's nothing to eat. Mm -hmm. And I can look at that, Justin. It's just been fouled. Yeah. I wanted to cover this. People yeah. say you can't grow soil with sheep because they're not a big animal. They can't trample. Mm. What do you mean they can't trample? Look at that. They just worked that paddock over and they were only on there for uh, 24 hours. They're a small animal, but they do this and they walk. They, they walk a lot. Now, this is really high quality where they're at right now. They're not having to walk very far to find a bite to eat, but they're going to foul that. So an animal actually eats with five mouths. You got one, two, three, four, five. So when animals walk on forage and they've got manure and urine on their hoof and they're walking mm -hmm. on the grass, they're not going to eat that grass. And so you can look out across your paddock and it looks like you got a ton of grass out there. No, you don't. They've already fouled that. They need to be moved. And if you make them eat that grass that's been fouled, their animal performance is going to go down. They might start ingesting a few parasites. And the lower you graze that down, the longer it's going to take to grow back. So move them. I mean, this is just beautiful. Everything in here is recovered. And I can tell that by looking at the grass. So what are you doing spraying? And if you, oh yeah, because it's, it's, it's recovered its blade. It's got a tip, yep. Okay. If, it, if it looks like that when you come back, you came back too soon. Did you? It, okay. it didn't grow back. So in the spring, does that tip happen faster? 30 days or less, maybe 20 days. Okay. Um, Bermuda grass, which we don't have, those guys say that stuff will come back in like, you know, 14 to 15 days. Okay. Yeah. So what would you do in that case? Clip it. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Without bringing or get, the animals Or get back more animals. It. Or get more animals. Okay. Yeah. So it would not be a good idea to bring the animals back on it in 14 days. No, this is our natural reseeding program right okay. here. So we haven't put any, we haven't put down any clover seed now for about uh, 15 years. But th this is a uh, oh, okay. This is red clover, and I did, I just gave it a quick. There's probably twice that much more seed in there. That's, that's the good seed. That's the hard seed. And see, the, the animals will trample that on the ground. Mm -hmm. yeah, all those have got seed in them, too. I just didn't mill it out of there. And you're just milling it for demo. Yeah. Yeah. It's but not like uh, you come out here and kneel it. <laughs> just, they, they do wow. that. On a really big, on a really big seed head, mm -hmm. I've counted 60 seeds in one seed head. Okay. Why well, are we paying $3 a pound to keep our farms with clover in them? We got all this clover out here that we can let go to nat. There's, there's another clump of it. Okay. They can go to natural reseeding, and it's this is our seed for next year. Yeah. And the okay. animals trample that through the winter time on the ground. It just comes screaming back the next year. Okay. But if you don't give your clover enough time to get a full seed head in the fall, you're not going to get any natural reseeding. Okay. But we're, we've got a long enough recovery. Look at it out there, yeah. bro. It's all those black spots. Those are mm -hmm. all, that's all clover that's went to seed. So we got a lot of natural reseeding out here. So in the spring, you don't do the move your animals over the whole farm in two weeks. Or do you? Well, we have 16 farms. We can't get around them in two weeks. But that's okay, because maybe the parent, if, if somebody can, the parasites aren't, aren't as active. If you and go it's around okay. your farm in two weeks, your grass better be screaming. Okay. All right. I would say it's going to be more like uh, 25 to 30 days. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, oh, should we look at your mineral feeder? Is that significant uh, part yeah. of the management? Yeah, we can go up there and look at that. So when we first got here and we didn't have it on tape, you were telling me a general rule of thumb grazing schedule. So in the spring, which here in Missouri, April, May, you're moving them every third, they're, they're not coming back to this land for till 30 days. That's right, that's right. Is it the same size paddock every time? No, 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 no. You no. adjust the... We adjust the size. The posts. Of, yeah. Okay. So in the springtime, Justin, we have to get the sheep over the land fast enough, mm -hmm. we'll give them this whole paddock at once. Oh, a huge paddock. Huge paddock. We may only leave them here a day or a day and a half and we're gone. Okay. We're just trying to take the tips off and move. And Tip and skip. Tip and skip. And then do you clip behind them with a mower? No, no, not on the first. We don't, we don't clip it's, until June. Okay. The grass, see we have the spring flush and it really takes off about May 10th to the 17th. If you go in there and clip real early, you're really going to set that plant back. I want okay. my plants time to get down some roots. And when I say clip, you know, we're leaving. Well, I wouldn't clip that. I see warm season. I, I go around them. I do not clip warm season grass. Mm -hmm. um, that thing's got a root on it eight foot long, and I want it to do this. Okay. I want it to go to seed. You want more of these? I want more of these. Absolutely. Okay, so you let, you let the... This gets preferential treatment. <laughs> okay. What about trees? You missed some trees? Are you trying to have a silver pasture? Well, we, we, we have trees. Uh, I can show you some silver pasture we've been working on. And these guys are the tool for that. Okay. Because we went in and cut out a lot of trees. And boy, I mean, the brush just took off. And I'm like, what am I going to do now? Well, I've got the tool right there. Are they okay going from grass to then brush yep. in a day? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, here's a little tree right here they worked on. So they can punctuate in their diet. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah, um, so is that a good tree? Uh, no. So it's, it's okay. They're, yeah, they're kind clipping of a up. Tree. Okay. Uh, the Multifer rose bush is having a hard time of it. It's got a few leaves that Do you escaped. want this? Well, I, I don't want them taking over the farm, and my landowners sure don't like them. So they just love the sheep from that aspect. Okay. If you've got something with a thorn on it, whether it's a thorn tree or a Multifer rose bush, sheep are your ticket. They'll, they'll get that, okay? Okay. So we talked about cows and sheep together. Is it better to, if you can't run cow, I, I, could I run sheep behind my cows? And that's yes. better than nothing? That's what we're doing. Oh, you are? Yeah, never, never run sheep in front of the cows. Okay, why? Because sheep do this. They walk a lot. Yeah. And you put cows in here, they are gonna be so pissed off at you because <laughs> everything in here smells like a sheep. Uh -huh. They're not going to eat it. They're going to walk okay. around bawling their head off and they're like, but see, sheep got a little bitty mouth. Mm. They can come behind cows no problem because all eat. the weeds are left. The cows don't eat yeah. the weeds and the sheep do. So the, the sheep eat more of what the cow won't eat. That's right. And that's okay. why the two do this so well. They, cro they, they prop each other up. And then the sheep's eating the cow parasite. Yep. And the cow's eating the sheep parasite. Even so? Yeah. Yes. They're both How eating. How so? Because if they're not coming back for... 45 days. Ideally, you want the sheep right behind the cows. One day behind them. Yeah, and we, we have that happen on this farm occasionally, but you know, we, we have a lot going on here. Um, I would like to have probably twice, maybe three times more sheep. And we're working that way. We kept a bunch of ewe lambs okay. this year. So, we're, so gonna, were the cows in here then? The cows were in that bottom um, Okay. about uh, 10 days ago, okay. 10 or 12 days ago. And the sheep are about to go in there? Yep, they'll be going in there next. Yeah. How long has it rested, that bottom? Oh. Well, I guess it doesn't matter so much if you're following it with sheep. Yeah, with sheep, the cows and the sheep. The sheep don't eat the same thing as the cows. Okay. Th so this, this is your mineral feeder? Yeah, this this is the mineral. You're doing the ABC minerals? Uh, this is Free Choice Enterprises. So oh. there's, there's 16 minerals in here. Each one's individual. Okay. And uh, they can actually select exactly what they want. Now... People freak out that we've got copper. <laughs> no, I know. We've That's got controversial, copper. controversial, Greg. Well, we got copper over here. And they can eat it if they want to. Look, get some. <laughs> is that your copper? That's copper. It's right? gone. Is no, it? no, this, this is? One, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. okay. Stand back. Yeah, how did you? Yeah, I need to do that. Copper. Is yeah. this burnt in? This, yeah. These, yeah. these, that's what I'm going to have to do. That's why you buy it. Oh, you bought this? Yeah, we this bought this. Mineral feed. Yeah. Is this for cows or for sheep? Yep, cows and sheep. 
But the cow, this is designed for a cow. Mm -hmm. The sheep, it's not too heavy. Yep, you gotta get those the, the thinner tarp. Where did you get the tarp? Uh, from the supplier. What you call it, which is like a rubber mat. Yep. And where, where I guess, where did you get this? Thing? Free Choice Enterprises. Free Choice <laughs> Minerals. <laughs> free choice we got minerals. all kind of ads for Yeah, Free uh, Choice uh, Minerals out of uh, you're just, Iowa, Minnesota. Or uh, Iowa, Wisconsin. If we don't do this, we'll get a thousand calls. Oh, I know you will. I will too. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to link all this yeah. now. <laughs> it's conveyor belt. It's it is. Conveyor belt. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. See all the ply? Okay. Yeah. So, okay, you're talking about copper because a lot of people tell you crazy for feeding a sheep copper. Well, copper in cattle mineral will get you in trouble, or it can. Okay. It's in there at too high a level. And the sheep eat the cattle mineral, they're getting too much copper. But okay. here it's by itself. Yeah. And so the sheep, that's enough. Some people don't like pepper on their eggs, my wife. Okay. And so if I put pepper on her eggs very much, she's going to know it. Well, the sheep, when they come by that copper, they just may touch their nose to it. There's people using copper to knock the worms out of sheep. Okay. They're actually using it as a dewormer. Okay. Now, I don't know. I've never, I guess it may work. I don't know. But I know the sheep can eat copper if it's by itself and they're not going to read on it. Okay. That's the key is to have it separated, not all mixed together. All right. So they can limit Here's if it's the all mixed up, then they'll eat and eat and eat it. If, you, if your sheep, let's say they need phosphorus, and so they come into that full mineral, it's got phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, iron, selenium, iodine, all of it, all mixed together, and they're after yeah. phosphorus, they're going to overeat, mm -hmm. and they may eat too much manganese or whatever, and that manganese is going to tie up the phosphorus. Mm -hmm. And so what the true mineral they really need, they don't get because they over ate and got too much of another one that ties the other one up. Yeah. Now I use manganese, I, it's, that may not tie up phosphorus, but you get my drift. I understand. Yeah. yeah. Are you, how anal are, are you about this? Are we gonna drag this over today? Or no, be behind no. Them a couple of I'll days? have the boys move it in the morning. In the so it, it you can't pull to... this by hand. This thing weighs about 700 pounds. Okay. But you normally get, we would. Yeah, yeah. Normally it'd be pulled over there. But they're only yeah. gonna be without mineral tonight. So fine. And the dogs okay. won't have their feet either. Yeah. And this is worth the cost, the 16 minerals. Cause We've been on it since 2008. Uh, our mineral consumption is down about 70%. Okay, so it is true that the, they're remineralizing the land. 80% goes out the butt. And they're picking yeah. up on what minerals are actually not yeah. in the grasses. Yep. And and so they're eating more. Yeah. And when do you not start this program? Don't start this program in the wintertime. Why not? Because there's no green grass, and they will okay. they will, they will overeat. They'll eat it like grain. They'll eat this. Yes. Yeah. Don't so do just that. don't give them any minerals in the winter. Well, once you start what in the summertime, you? you keep it in the winter. But now, yeah, they're kind of used to it. They're not going to read on because they, they're used to it. But just starting out, zero day one, I would not put this out there in the middle of December. Okay. They're going to clean it out, and it's going to cost you a lot of money. Yeah. And the thing I found about the sheep mineral, well, heck, you got five sheep. They're, no, yeah. You're, you're not going to go through much mineral at all. I've got one for the cows, same thing, but I've got wheels on it. Yep. And I move it like a chick shawl. Yep. It works out it. nice. I saw it. It works good because yep. I only have six head of cows. Yep. Yep. So I think what I'm asking you now is, it's good to see that a lamb can pick that up. I didn't know if the mat would be too heavy for a sheep. Yeah, that's real nice. Okay. Thanks. When you buy, if you buy the feeder from Bader, they sell those. Just make sure that you want the thin top on it. You're gonna okay. have sheep in it. And the cow can work it too. Okay. Yep. Just remember, the best medicine you can give a sheep is what you and I just moved into. Okay. Is a fresh pasture. This has all been cleaned off. There hasn't been any sheep on here for eight weeks. The sun has cleaned up the ground. There's no parasites in here. Mm -hmm. And so if a sheep is packing a few parasites and you put them on clean ground they can shed those parasites and if you move them they're leaving the parasites behind them they're not building up in the body of the sheep yep so in the spring it's not coming back for 30 days april may ish june july ish 45 days yep august september ish 60 60 to, uh, too much, too much. i i i, I I'm a little bit scared of you giving all these numbers. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that's because it depends. Yeah. 
this year we had rain last year we didn't um, we were up to 80 to 90 days last year on yeah. a rotation so you've got to watch your forages and people say but Greg if it doesn't grow back what do you do you sell some animals okay or um, you could feed hay if you're or you could feed hay that's going to be expensive or mm -hmm. look at your neighbor maybe he's got some land or you can rent to put your animals on for a month or two okay. to give yours more time but don't keep your head in the sand and say let's go it's going to change it's not it hasn't rained things are drying up you got too many animals okay and guess what's coming at you real hard and fast mm. winter yeah and if you're overstocked in the fall going you got a, a very expensive winter coming at you you can feed hay all winter okay. and it's no fun feeding an animal every day hay it's yeah. just no fun at all this is fun <laughs> and it's very profitable animals need to feed themselves now this is fun, even in the winter, even in the snow. When they can, when they can graze, it's fun. Yeah. Look yeah. at this grass, though. Yeah. It's yeah. half clover. Yeah. Sheep love this. Yeah. Look, and look out at there. It's just clover everywhere. Cows have to go so how long has it been since they've been in here? About 60 days. And it's ready because it's bladed. Yep. Yep. This is our lifetime lease farm. Uh huh. And when I got this farm, Jan and I got it in 1999. It was all broom sedge. Room said cedars and moss. The side of that hill was solid moss. There was no grass on it. And I'm like, man, I'll never get grass on that. But I have. So a good grazing management where you're tramping the stuff on the ground, feeding the soil microbes, good rest periods in between your grazings, and then in the wintertime buying purchased hay and feeding it out on the land. This is what this is what happens. I mean, there's a lot of money at our feet right here. <laughs> I and mean, there's a lot of gain out here. You can you can put a lot of fat on animals with this type of grass. And that's what it's about. Stay focused on the grass. The buildings, the equipment, all this other hubla, it's all just noise. This is this is where the money's at. It's in the forage. It's yeah. So I yeah. think people overcomplicate it. <laughs> yes. We're actually at another farm now, Greg Judy's or who we got here, Greg? This is Alex Weber. Okay. Alex and Bobby uh, run goats, and I'm gonna let Alex kind of talk about what they're doing here. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead, Alex. Goats. All right. Yeah. So we're starting a little targeted grazing business. We're gonna be bringing these goats to people's properties. Okay. And performing this service. Um, cool. So we're basically, it's kind of an initial step in clearing brush. They can be pretty hard on this brush and eat a lot of the green stuff off of it, strip the bark, um, even in some cases kill the brush. Wow, this right here looked just like that. Yeah. How long have they been in here? Uh, this is a bigger portion. They've been in here probably four days now. Okay, and how long will you keep them in there? Uh, probably gonna move them tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Cool, have you got any jobs yet? Um, we're working on it. We've yeah. talked to a bunch of people. We've gone and done a couple site visits and stuff and we're still lining a few things up cool. yeah we just we're just getting started what's all that what's in all the pans um, we've been feeding a little bit of grain in the morning okay. to friendly them up we had a okay. little leftover pig feed and when that's gone we're gonna be done we might give them a little molasses okay. as a treat uh, but it was a bit of work to get them all to get the group friendly and working with us and everything and now they've gotten used to the daily moves which they didn't really get before they just kind of got turned out um, so now that they're used to us, they're, it's a lot easier cool. to work with them. Yeah. And you've mowed strips here so that yeah. you can actually get a fence in. Yep. Okay. And uh, my neighbor, did, the guy who owns this place did that for me. There's a bunch of them in there. These things here, I've just kind of had to cut with a chainsaw and a trimmer. Okay. How are you keeping this fence hot enough for a goat? Uh, so much of it. I've got a solar charger right there okay. that I, I kind of rigged up. It's just a oh, three. Oh, you built this? Yes. What? I'm gonna shut it off so we don't get a a shock. It's hot. It's real hot. Okay. So that's just a. You can either plug this into the wall or you can plug it into a battery. Cool. So I've got an old toolbox, deep cycle. deep cycle battery, solar charge controller. The panel runs through the charge controller into the battery, which which keeps it from overcharge. Keeps it from overcharging the battery. Um, but this is. This charger is a little bigger than your typical solar charger that you buy prefab. Okay. Um, 
And so I, this is a little more powerful. Yeah, it's just made a huge grounding own. rod. Yeah, I just made my own ground rod. And that's that's neat. That step on it, so you can actually drive it in without a hammer. Yep. <laughs> if it's real hard, you can use a post pounder on this. Oh, cool. But it usually goes in pretty good. That's cool. What inspired you to start this business? Um. Ah, we were just kind of looking for a new enterprise and just talking about it with my wife and she was kind of excited about goats and I don't know it was easy for me to get excited about it and it's something that Greg's not doing here yet so we yeah. feel like it's a pretty good fit yeah yeah come on goats yeah. like it's gonna rain we're not coming out now Greg I heard a rumor that you once tried pigs with cows but, yes. th but they were so smart they would nudge the cows to encourage them to manure yes. so they could eat it no, is that a true in. or they, false story? They rolled in it. They didn't eat it. <laughs> oh, they use it as a wallow. Yeah, as a, as a I wallow. get it. <laughs> yeah. That's a true story. It's pretty dark in here. I don't know what, how well your camera can see, but oh, yeah. if you look directly behind you, you see all the dense vegetation. Uh, this looked exactly like that over here. Okay. A couple of days ago. Before. <laughs> after. Nice, yeah. in just a couple of days. Yeah. yeah. Cool. What's amazing, Justin, about these goats is they're actually eating eastern red cedar. Yeah? I've seen them eat as high as they can reach, and they're not only eating the bark off the cedar, they're going on the limbs and eating all the bark off the limbs. And the goats are in excellent condition. It's not like they're starving. Yeah. It's just that they crave it. Is that good because well, you don't want that tree? Or? Yeah, it's an invasive. Okay. The cedar's real high in tannin. And so they're probably knocking out the worms in their gut. Look at that goat right there. Pulling the bark off of it. Yeah. They eat it like licorice. So if you got cedar on your property, you need to call Alex. They can take care of them without spraying. Yeah. And a lot of people don't want spray, and I don't blame them. I don't want spray on my land either. Yeah. So this is a very environmentally friendly way to control invasive brush. Poison ivy, whatever. Bring them in. They'll, they'll clean all that stuff up. Yep. Nice. Oh my uh, god. All of it clear? <laughs> well, yeah, that would take a long time. The thing is, it'd be hard to get into the trees to chainsaw. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. all the yeah. brush. Yeah. I mean, it takes me an hour to clear a path out to the road here. Yeah. Uh, and stacks up on the side. And now, what about following this with pigs to uproot grass seed? Yeah. That would be a great idea. We've been doing pigs here for the last three years, and they do a really nice job of stirring up this litter and taking the roots out of some of the other things like poison ivy and stuff yeah. they'll just pull it out by the roots. Oh, good point yeah. yeah this is thick enough too that they'd have shade in here yeah. in Missouri you got to have shade for pigs okay do you, now shade for sheep I never got to ask you do you not give shade to sheep because yeah, they, they always have a tree yeah they usually have trees if, if yeah. somebody didn't have trees zero trees I need shade um, I don't know if it gets 95 they'd be more comfortable with shade okay yeah they're yeah. going to be happier, but it's not They're going to be great. happier. I don't know if they need it, but they'd okay. be happy. Right. So this is the autumn olive that is invasive here. Yeah. And this is going to kill it, isn't it? Yeah. Well, they took all the bark off of it. A tree yeah. lives by bark. Look how yeah. high they went. And they were in here. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Absolutely. Now, people want more you. This I got some good news. <laughs> He's launched a YouTube channel. <laughs> five days a week, too. Yeah. You don't days just, a week. when he goes, he goes all out, doesn't yeah, he? Not yeah. the once a week. No, no, like no. Five every, days. Day, every day. Five days. Every five days. As if you wasn't busy yeah. enough, right? Yeah. Check out his YouTube channel, Wealth of Information. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to subscribe. I didn't know about this. So I'm going to be having to check it out. Yeah, you need to hit that subscribe button. <laughs> yeah. We'll go get you some love. Judy, regenerative So this branch. is what my folks love to do. How many subscribers do you have? We started out in January, had uh, about 20. We've got uh, 4,200. 4,200. Yeah. What's the name of the YouTube channel? Greg Judy, regenerative rancher. Okay, I'm on link it. Let's get you to six six or seven thousand yeah absolutely <laughs> okay that sounds good if you guys are feeling real saucy we'll get them up to ten all right go show them some love all right